A month after the death of rock star Scott Weiland, we're learning more about what happened on his tour bus. Bloomington police just released these photos that investigators took on December 3rd, shortly after Weiland's bandmates found him unresponsive on the bus. They also released the transcript of the frantic 911 call that the band members were making. Angela Davis had a chance to review that and joins us with more. Angela? Hi, Frank. You know, all together, the police report, the pictures, and the 911 call paint a picture of band members who are shocked to learn that the singer was not just sleeping, but likely dead. At the height of 90s grunge music, Scott Weiland was the frontman for Stone Temple Pilots. But on the night he died last month, he was on tour with his current band, The Wildabouts. The group had a performance the next day in Rochester, but their tour bus was parked outside the Country Inn and Suites in Bloomington. The police report states Weiland's tour manager couldn't wake him up, so he called on the band's drummer to help out. A transcript of the 911 call shows what the men told the dispatcher. I think he's dead. He's not moving. He's stiff, one of them said. The dispatcher tries to give them instructions on chest compressions, but they respond with, he's stiff. He's hard as a rock, like there's no breath. There's no nothing. The next day, as police searched the tour bus, they found two clear bags with a white powdery substance in Scott Whiteland's bedroom on the bus, and more under the mattress of a bunk bed of a bandmate. That powder tested positive for cocaine. The police report shows interviews with several band members revealed they believe Whiteland had been drinking heavily while taking prescription drugs for bipolar disorder and that he talked about using cocaine. An autopsy later revealed a toxic combination of drugs and alcohol in Wyland's bloodstream, as well as signs of cardiovascular disease and asthma. We also know that he struggled with heroin addiction, which he detailed in a memoir published in 2011. He was 48 years old, Frank. Tough. Angela, thank you.